Bluefin Brands celebrating Comic Con at home. I'm with David Edmondson, Mr. Jared, and of course the star of the show, Mr. Emilio Morales. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you guys? Fabulous. Look We're at doing well. got a lawn and the sun shining. I'm oh, yeah. dog just just <laughs> laying there. Oh, <laughs> sunbathing right see. there. <laughs> I swear she's alive. But all I want to say is I want to go like, Emilio! <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, man, that was high school all the, over again. Good night at the Roxbury fans out oh, there. Oh, my God. The next day, man, I heard it from <laughs> always and always. Emilio! And well, 20 years later. Yeah. Yeah. That's not the last time I do it. It'll <laughs> never go away. Oh, man, when we're in, sometimes when we're in San Diego or New York, Emilio! <laughs> <laughs> Um, some of you that are just joining us, you might notice that on David's screen there, there's all sorts of goodies on that table. You are looking at all of this year's event exclusives, including uh, the Tamashii Nation's Dragon Ball figures. You got three SHF, which are Androids uh, 17, 18, and Goku Ultra Instinct Sign, along with two, uh, what is those? Uh, F, I'm sorry, um, figure out zeros. zeros. Yeah, you got the Vegito there, you got the Brawly, and then of course we have this gorgeous Godzilla. Um, he is a, a blue beacon of hope shining right there on David's table. Uh, we also have the Bandai America exclusives. We have a Dragon Stars Brawly and then the Goku and Cell full form. What is that? The blast? Final Battle. Final Battle Blast. Final. Yeah. And then we also have our Transformers from um, Flame Toys. You're looking at a clear Optimus Prime. And then we don't have on the table, but is available to pre-order, is the Kurokara Curry uh, Star Saber Black version. Holy smokes. That is a lot of exclusives <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> to go oh, through. A whole bunch. Good What's really cool about the Transformer, uh, the Optimus, the Optimus, is that uh, the box, it's a nice collectible tin box, and the front of it is translucent. So when you shine a light through, it looks like it's the Autobot Matrix of Leadership. And uh, if you go... Uh, to at Bluefin Brands on any of our social media. You know, Justin posted up some amazing pictures that Jay took of us, and it really, really shows the coolness of these kind of model kits. Yeah, it really does. And the tin's pretty rad. Very rad. I mean, we all come for the tin. We stay for the Optimus, but we came for the tin. Yeah, I'm just looking for something to put my sweets in. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Maybe some coins, like some pennies that I found in my car. No big yeah. deal. Uh, but anyway, enough of that. Emilio, how are you doing today? Are you ready to talk dioramas and how amazing they are and how you have brought dollhouses to a whole new level for action figures? Yeah, yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Um, it's been a nice day uh, here in Seattle. It's nice and sunny. Um, but yeah, let's, let's go ahead. I'm ready to start and talk yeah. about uh, why uh, we love doing these things. Sure. So now we actually first met at uh, New York Toy Fair where you brought us some really cool dioramas for um, our DC uh, Injustice line, and as well as a bathhouse for the recently revealed E Honda figure. And everyone's really excited about that. I'll bring those up here in a second. But uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what you're working on? So um, a little bit about myself. Uh, I live in Seattle, obviously. Uh, I've been collecting toys for about 17 years now. Uh, I originally started with G.I. Joe. I was a huge G.I. Joe fan. Uh, I've had a lot of uh, three and three quarter memories, uh, the flag and a lot of things like that. But I've always been like a tournament player, 2D fighting, casual, not pro. And that's always been my passion. I have like a lot of fight sticks, arcade games. Uh, you name it, I, it's, it's funny. It, everything Storms represents, it's probably my childhood. So uh, that's, um, I want to say, was it? 2000, when did the first Sub Zero release for Storm? Was it two, or 2000? Uh, probably 2015. The 15, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember walking in there and um, I saw you, you guys were there, um, Jared, and I picked up the, the Sub Zero and I was like, hey, you know, I was already collecting the small uh, Jazzwares ones because um, I was a three and three quarter junkie. So I was like, yeah, I'll check these out. You know, I'm a big. <laughs> Mortal three Kombat and three quarter junkie. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. It was, man. Everything was three and three quarters. Uh, you know, my friends would always say, when are you going to grow up, man? <laughs> right. <laughs> we're going to play with big, big boy toys. Okay. So, uh, yeah, uh, actually, Six Inch was uh, Mortal Kombat. I, I wasn't even digging the Marvel Legends as much because, you know, it was more like toy bits and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, the Storm, I remember buying it, and uh, it was like love at first sight, man. I was 
I, I love the articulation, the way it moved, the detail on them. Uh, and yeah, I, I ended up talking to my brother and I was like, hey, you want to get some of these? Like, yeah, yeah, let's get them because he's also a big, uh, you know, a 2D fighter fan too. So we ended up buying them, man, and the rest is history. Right. No, that's cool, man. That's the way to do it. Yeah. It's, it's funny how you start, it starts with one, you get like some sort of gateway drug, as it were, and you're like, well, I have one, but it's got to fight somebody, so I can't just have Sub-Zero, right? I got to get Scorpion, and then before you know it, you're like, well, these two have been at it for a while. They need a break. I need to get the Cyber Ninja, yeah. in the case, maybe. And no, it's, yeah. uh, it's exhausting, <laughs> but we all do it, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it's funny you say that, because at first I was just getting the... Uh, I actually originally had the soda ones, and I was um, I had all those, too. But I was I was like, well, a Storm or new. I'll just get the player one. And I started liking them way too much, and I was like, all right, this <laughs> Looks like I need to get the rest of them, but it, I've had because um, of the store we had uh, the variants, and I was like, no, I'm never, I don't want the variants. I just want player one, just trying to you know consolidate the collection. And uh, oh my god, I went back and bought so many of them now, and I, which, which I had already in the cut. I was like, man, I should have kept. It. But you're right; it's like a gateway, right? It opens up, and it really is. Now uh, you you mentioned the store a couple times. Um, I just want to pull this up for everybody. Can you? Are you guys able to see that? Yep. Yep. So D pad, um, yeah. Yeah, let's talk about D pad, retro gaming and collectibles. In rent in or in rent in. Very excited about that. <laughs> so in rent in, um, I originally opened this about ten years ago at uh Spanaway actually. Uh it was uh partner up with North uh, Northwest Toys. And then I've I, like I said, I've always been a gamer and I did tournaments there. I always wanted to add a little twist with games. So then I, I ventured off and opened up D Pad uh, in the in Burien. In Burien. If, you're, if you're familiar with Seattle, I went to Burien. Sure. sure. Then from Burien, I went to um, Des Moines and uh, Des Moines to Renton. And uh, yeah, we've been in Renton for a long time now, and it's it's been a it's been a ride. Uh, now it's owned by my brother. I actually stepped down to run conventions and do events coordinating. So uh, he handles the whole store, and I just kind of just visit them when storm you know ship, shipments go in and <laughs> I, just, I just picture like stewie beating up brian and he's like where's my money man where's my money <laughs> just go, in, go in on the weekend and get your get your money I, I get my fix. That, you know, that's so funny because that's the that's kind of the best way to explain it so like he'll text me he's like hey the mecca truck's on the way or the storm truck's on here and i'm like ah i go visit him that's right so if you're so at what oh go ahead i was gonna say so at what point did you realize that you just had way too much space with just the figures, and you needed to make bigger things to put the figures in. And uh, and uh, what is storage like at your place with all the dioramas? For well, that is that for the dioramas is actually um, luckily now we can make them where we can piece them, right? Before um, you get little pieces here, and they're easy to store. You can put them in a in a tote box or. Um, Put them away nicely and break them down but yeah they take a lot of room and and that was that was one of the things that i was like wow these uh these are big there's got to be different ways to store these <laughs> that's the problem um, right the earth is the only problem. so big so real estate's always yeah. going to be an issue yeah that's always been an issue um you know luckily i've uh, got enough room to store uh things in a proper way and but uh i had to give up a lot of other lines so then i can make room for it but I really like one to work yeah. with. Are you able to repurpose some of the other ones that you use? Like, well, this wall doesn't work anymore, but I can use it for this and just kind of. Well, you know, it's funny. Retrofit. So it's funny you say that because in the beginning, uh, when you know dioramas were starting to become very popular, it was a very basic uh, like alley or warehouse. You have to show. You. I can show you like a basic one that uh, I I did, and you know it's just the basic walls. Mm -hmm. Basic garage here, so these are you know um, universal, right? Any any figure can go there, and, um, as long as it's just not you don't have hell hide right here, because then you'll be like, wait, that you can't put it right. there. Right? <laughs> but um, can you? Or can, can you? Right? My my GI <laughs> Joe's used to fight He Man on a regular basis. So. I, you know what? My my Chuck Norris was uh, when I was little. I had that little Chuck Chuck Norris too. Yeah, he was, totally. He was mobbing around with everybody, Ultimus Prime and everything. So 
No, yeah, you're, um, that that was the original how people used to start doing them with like alleys or you know lo um, local things that you would see in life, right? right. Where we go strike a pose or something. So right. you gotta you gotta recreate the CD underbelly of downtown, yeah. as it were. Yeah, yeah. So so yes, it, you can reuse them. You can use the, the you make them with magnets, so it's easy to put together, and then you can just yeah, just use them, reuse them and stuff. Sure. Cool. Now, if you were to lean to your left, it looks like there's a thousand boxes behind you. Uh, <laughs> and I would just love for people to see. Uh, my left. All right, there we go. Look at all those boxes back there. That's a lot of storm action, man. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a dedicated storm fan right there. <laughs> I am. I am. I, I, what can you say? I, I, I love them. Um, they're fun, man. They're, they're great figures. They're the detail, the posability, and the amount of things you can do. And I think uh, you're going back to the same question you just said, making a diorama that's useful. Uh, with with these lines, you know, we wanted to take it to a uh, next level with uh, Daniel, you know, from Legendary Dials. Uh, I know you've seen his work too. Uh, we just wanted to do a, a stage, right? Because what, what makes, uh, what really makes the character pop out more than just like an alley or or a building and, and you know we started talking and he's like dude let's replicate the stages so um we started working together and uh, obviously uh the work that was in new york was all daniels and he just kills it he knows how to replicate the exact level and i think when we started posting that on groups and forums it just turned the whole hype around and now you see people using 3d printers and we'll get to that later but I, I, right. I think people just um, appreciate the figure more because you see, you can actually see the fatalities or, or picture all the um, you know, the realness and the, the actual action figure, right? Uh, kind of like a, like a video game com coming to real life. I'm trying to make this diorama show, but it's like freaking out. Yeah, I remember Jared, uh, he told us, he's like, oh yeah, we got some cool dioramas coming for New York Toy Fair this year. And I'm like, oh yeah, it'll be fine, blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden they showed up and I'm like, holy smokes, these are really right. incredible. Uh, it was just a shame that Honda wasn't ready to be shown off so people could see the bathhouse in person because it really, really brought it out. And uh, yeah, it was it was great, uh, great just seeing just how much it brings. You know, our previous uh, stream, we talked to D Amazing about you know, figure posing and you know, photography, and he was real big on, well, Godzilla's Illinois. He was real, he was huge on you know trying to do as much in camera as possible you know without having to rely on editing it after the fact uh, and you know just the visceral feel of like the, the practical effects the practicality of you know the setting and uh, you know I, I'd be interested to see you know do you like to take photos or are you more I build the dioramas for other people to take the photos and if you do you know have you noticed a vast increase in uh, you know the quality of your photos you know putting them in these great settings. Oh uh, yeah, actually, I started taking uh, photos. I, I follow a lot of the great guys like D and you know other people too. Um, there's people in the groups that are just awesome at, at, that are taking photos, and yes, it encourages me to do it. And I'm I'm taking a route right now. Uh, I'm still experimenting, but I'm taking like the natural light. Uh, I haven't used Photoshop. I do know how to use Photoshop, but I haven't. And uh, you can kind of check them out if you go on my Instagram. Again, I'm I'm building it, so it's not that big. It's on I'm hip too. And um, you can see some of the lightings that uh, that I've been using, just natural light outside, or because I haven't gotten a um, a 3D printer yet, I use natural props that I find. So this is right here. I'm getting ready to do a um, Sagat stage for Thailand. So I try to use everything I can and cre creating props and also the outside atmosphere. Emilio, what goes into like when you're studying the diorama, when you're creating them, um, do you like study the maps or the stages um, and what goes into that? Like um, in terms of like, you know, finding out the details um, for the stages. Uh, you know, I've been playing these games for so long that it's, yeah, you can kind of see it, right? For example, um, when I went to Michael's at a craft store, I walk around and I'll see like a statue and I'll immediately I'll think, hey, I know where I can use this. This is like from Sagat stage or this guy right here um, that I'm going to kind of blend in with, with the prop there and just kind of do like a, 
you know, like a temple base fighting. So um, yeah, I, I, I know you study them you, and then you figure out in your brain how to kind of create it. And luckily we, you know, these are, the old, I think the original way everybody really uses these thick foams, I started using uh, a little bit thinner just so I can um, create more detail and uh, manipulate the, the board a little bit more and, and you know, not a, uh, not carve so much with the with the thick uh oh. nice. I know like um I, every time I walked into like a Pier One Imports I'd see like a fountain or something, I'd be like, I got a toy that would look pretty good next to that silly fountain. <laughs> Stuff yeah, like yeah. that. So I totally get it what you mean when you walk into a store and you're like, Oh man, I'm totally getting that. Not for what it's supposed to be for, but for my toy. Right. Story. You'll be surprised, man. I mean, it, it's as simple as um, you know, finding slime, right? right. And then this slime all of a sudden into this guy uh barrel oh yeah so, cool. yeah so it's you know it's simple it's as simple as that popsicles you put popsicles together you get a pallet um do they have <laughs> jokes on the pallet <laughs> what's that <laughs> i said popsicle sticks usually have jokes are there jokes on your pallet <laughs> <laughs> you know that's funny um uh, um daniel started doing little uh, easter eggs so yeah eventually there'll be something funny uh, you know, you just put on there that only you know, or if you ever give it to someone, right? When they find it, you'll right. see if like, little Easter eggs like <laughs> that. Oh, nice! Yeah, <laughs> perfect. Yeah. No, that's great. Now, uh, a lot of people when they start something, they they just have to finish it. Do you start like a project at like eleven o'clock at night, and then before you know it, it's like five in the morning, or are you able to to discipline yourself and like? step away uh, for a second you know it depends on your amount of skill sometimes when it's your first time you have to step away because um if you just keep going at it you'll make mistakes or, or you'll get frustrated but if, if you've done it repetitively you can do it in your sleep then you do something the night before uh big stream and here you go so you can show it off <laughs> so i did this yesterday for you know just to mess around and a lot of people want to see you with a garbage can dumpster sure so, that's cool no, that's awesome. Yeah. I was going to ask, Emilio, do you do you do um, any kind of sculpting as well to incorporate into them? Or is it mostly just like foam and materials? Uh, oh, yeah, there's some sculpting involved. Uh, there's there's amazing people out there that uh, I learned off. Uh, they were sculpting three and three quarter, which I think is incredibly hard um, because they're so small, right? But yeah, I've been, I've been doing some sculpting um, that I add on to the areas um, I've been wanting to get really uh, more into it that way, but you know that way I can get like fine detail on like things like this, and you can right. add uh, you can add on to it um, if it's not accurate enough for the stage. And what kind of putty do you use? Uh, putty, you know, like I just regular putty that I, I find at the store. I'm not like I said, I'm not really I'm not really into that yet, so I just. I just started experimenting, and so gotcha. I don't, yeah, I'm not, I don't do know have, which one. Do you have a but secret I, room in your house, like in Beetlejuice up in the attic, where there's a full-blown replica of, like, the city <laughs> that they live in? Are you, are, you, are you close to that yet? Uh, no, not yet, but I have seen that, man. This guy that has a whole city of buildings, and it, it's actually pretty neat. And then he has the extreme dials, too, as, like, a mini city. I don't have that yet. I don't, <laughs> You'll get there. You'll get there. Yeah, I mean, I think in order to have that, you have to have a whole separate room, right? And then sure, or your figures and stuff like that. But I could probably create something. Now, like when we do like these reveals, like how we just had uh, the Motaro reveal and E Honda and Dimitri from Darkstalkers. Um, when you see reveals like that, do you immediately start thinking like, "Oh man, I have this and this and this, so I can recreate that stage for that character. I can't wait to get my hands on it," kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, like I said, it, it it all comes with the passion you have for the you know the background of these figures, right? Um, a lot of people jump into it and they're like, "Oh, you know, I play Mortal Kombat here and there," so they they, they fall in love because of their childhood or or how the experience they have, and then there's other people that are super passionate about it and like did tournaments and do whatever. So yeah, as soon as I see like a I figure automatically I'm just like, oh, this would look good in this stage with, with Morgan or something like that. So, right. yeah, immediately when I, when I saw Matar, you know, I called Daniel. I was like, dude, you got to do a, the, the layer. 
Sure. And um, like the accessories that, that come with the figures these days, it really brings it to another level, right? So like with Mataro, where he's got like that bloody skeleton. When I first saw that, like I immediately like texted Jared, like, does it come with this bloody skeleton? Is that real? No way. Yeah. This is a thing. So I mean, I think accessories also, just like your dioramas, you know, am, you know, amplify the whole figure. And then like with Tamashi, with the different faces that you can put on them and the different hands, expressions, all that stuff. It, uh, it takes it to a whole new level. It's, it's incredible to see that sort of thing happen. It does, man. Those uh, those skeletons right now are fire. Everybody <laughs> loves those skeletons. I mean, I I used one of them and did the you know the scorpion burning fatality, and people were just like, "God, I need more. I should have bought more." <laughs> <laughs> totally. But they're, yeah, they're great. They're. I can't wait to see when I saw those ones. I was like, "Oh man, I need those too." <laughs> no, do you have great. a Do you have a particular uh, diorama that you're most proud of, or something? Or like, yeah, I nailed this one. Uh... Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, you know, I think I think it's all any of the stage ones we worked on. They're just because we were we're so passionate about the game, right? So if you see the the pit was very complicated. Is what what Daniel would say because we still, even though it's finished, we still feel like we have to have like a background, right? Because then there's the the witch that flies over, and then you get the the whole scenery. So even if you do have that stage set up with the guys it still feels like okay we, we got to put more into it but that was a good that was a big accomplishment um the deadpool was very impressive um because i think we encouraged a lot of people to push themselves and, and kind of replicate it and redo it and there's some members of the group that you know, better. I, I was blown away i was just like wow and it makes me happy because i feel like we um you know started something that uh, a lot of people are excited for and um, instead of, you know, seeing someone that's better than you, you just get excited because you're like, man, that, that's just awesome. And then you learn from it and you want to do, you want to just do something better. Right. Or, 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 yeah, inspire. Not only, not, not just saying uh, technically better, right? It's just, it's just, it just inspires you just to keep going and that you, you're touching the community for them, for everyone to do it, right? Not just one person, but everybody's participating or wanting to do something fun. Sure. What is, um, like since you since you can find parts at various places, uh, what what kind of cost do you usually look at into building these things? So the the best way I can put this is like, it, it is funny because a lot of people ask me this question, and I'm like, it's kind of like when you own a car, man. Like you know, you go to the mechanic and you're like, you get that quote, and you're like, ah, oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> I so can do it cheaper than that. <laughs> <laughs> so you know. So then, you know, you, you go and you do your research. And of course, with uh, there's a lot of great people out there that are better than me. and They um, have YouTube tutorials and you just learn. You, you go out there and the cost, you, you figure out that the cost material is not that much. Um, you know, you can create something really nice. Like, for example, this dumpster here will probably cost about five bucks, you know. So, you know, it's not that. We have a we have a question from uh, from Chris Cooper. Uh, he wants to know uh, what would what would your dream diorama be to make? Like cost is not an issue, space isn't an issue. You have this giant room in a sack of money. You Scrooge McDuck. You can build any diorama you want. <laughs> What's the one you want to build, or have you already built your dream diorama? Uh, so you know it's funny. I'm gonna go off topic for this one because uh, that's what got me into dioramas a long a long time ago. Uh, Dream DreamWorks uh, made a GI Joe like cave headquarters and it was so detailed i like I, I was so new to this i it blew my mind and i couldn't like understand how he did this uh but it was like an underground layer uh with the cave and then up, up on the top it was like hidden like arco um arkham regular town but if my dream um diorama would probably be doing something like that for like a cobra base only because i was a Huge, I've been a huge G.I. Joe fan, even though uh, I got out of three and three quarter and then, you know, I thought I was safe and then the six inch came. So I'm kind of like, oh, man, like I sucked back in. <laughs> but that would, that would that would be my uh, my dream diorama, something G.I. Joe related. You got to rebuild the aircraft carrier, the USS Flag. Oh, <laughs> man. So I, there's, a, there's a picture in my Facebook. Uh, my son wanted that on the water and I'm like, does it float? And he goes, <laughs> Make it float. So I went up getting an air mattress and I put it on an air mattress and it was floating. Oh, that's uh, rad. 
yeah, Joku Texas Cosplay, he says that, that he has a miniature scale city diorama for his kaiju, giant robots, and Ultraman. And uh, I, uh, I have to see this, so uh, definitely uh, tweet that at, at Bluefin Brands uh, so that we can uh, we can see your yeah, diorama we'll and anyone else who has some. Definitely. In fact, I'll pull it up in case he does it right away. Nice. So, you know, what is something that you would give to, like, someone who's like, you know, I would like to take my figures to the next level, and I'd love to, you know, build something, you know, obviously I'll have to start out small. What's some advice that you would give to, to would-be diorama builders? Um, you know, thankfully there's a lot of YouTube tutorials right now, and it will save you a lot of headache and a lot of frustration. Uh, there's some good tutorials tutorials out there that you can check out on how to like how to make a dumpster how to make barrels and it, it's a lot easier um, now with all the internet access that we had than five ten years ago right, right. and it, it, it makes you um, it blows your mind because you can still see some of these um, old timers that have been doing like train dioramas that's that's kind of how I picked it up you know train hobbies and these older guys and you can still learn so much on uh, how to use a brush and how to paint by those guys because they've been doing it you know the, the good old-fashioned way but right. yeah that's that's the best tip uh, i can give anyone just there's a lot of tutorials out there um one of the things that i had a mistake that i didn't do and it is get involved in groups you know a lot of us feel um shy or that we're gonna get bashed or you know or you know because the other guy has you know twenty thousand likes and you have 200 it doesn't matter you know if you have the same passion for these toys or the work, just get out there, talk, and there's a lot of good people out there still. Absolutely. Yeah, there's another, another really good question in the chat. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, diorama makers come from a background of Warhammer, you know, model making. Um, Optimus Prime Plug. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> Chris just made a fan for life here. All right, uh, now we're talking. Uh, do, now, Emilio, do you come from that kind of background? You know, I played Warhammer but I was terrible at it, and I, but I had a friend who made this entire table with terrain and stuff like that. Is that kind of what gave you the impetus, or is this strictly for figures? Uh, dude, I, I, you know, it's funny. I have a background of a lot of stuff. Um, I did drywall. <laughs> I'm a tech guy now. I do IT, but I did drywall <laughs> and, you know, did a bunch of construction. And I think, if, you know, when you start putting things together and you have a drive, um, you know how to measure and, and you know, use power tools. It, it, it's it's a lot of help, but um, I, I think the first thing I really started to do. It's funny. I started modding Nerf guns. Nice. <laughs> that, that was my and and then I started. Um, when you start having passion for figures and they don't make what you want and you're impatient, you start customizing, right? So I started customizing GI Joes and um, chain, doing ba uh, kick bashes and things like that. And then eventually, I was like taking pictures, I was like, I think I need something else. Like I started seeing other people with backgrounds and effects, that's, and that's how I evolved to that. But you really don't need to, like I said, if you can follow directions and, and see YouTube, you don't, you don't need, you can, you can learn everything. Right. As long as you have a passion for it. Right, and there's no, there's no time limit. You can take all the time you want. It's up to you to, to hone your craft. A lot of people, like me, I, I get something, I have to build it right away, and then I don't know what else to do with it, you know, whereas, I could have been done. I didn't like whatever an hour when some people might have taken like two days and made it look amazing, and mine looks like a two-year-old made it. I'm like, whatever, man, it's finished. <laughs> right, and, it, so, and then you got the, you got the well gifted people, right? It takes them like thirty minutes, and you're like, oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, like David, David Clark, he's our ultimate yeah. builder. He builds things like uh, like so fast with his eyes closed, and his models look amazing. And then mine is like ready to fall apart it's got like a piece of cardboard underneath it to keep it holding and standing together so i mean you really got to take your time and enjoy yourself while you're doing these things i think the last model i built was probably one of those lowriders that hops oh and, nice <laughs> back, back in the day man and i had i had super glue all over my hands and i was like never again <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I was like really our models. no glue no paint <laughs> Yeah. Emilio, um, sorry, uh, you mentioned earlier power tools. Uh, what other kind of tools um, would, would like a beginner need? Oh. Like, a, I yeah, guess, like an yeah. exacto knife, blades? Yeah, yeah, exacto knife, blades. Let me see if I have something here laying around. Um, Do you have a tool belt? Do you walk into a room with your shirt off like a <laughs> tool man, Taylor? Gonna, you're you're going to laugh because a lot of the tools are like lady stuff, you know? Like sure. Precious. Yeah, you know. got to get the details, right? Got to get the details, about. yeah. So, 
yeah, you can get some brushes. So for a beginner, if you really like, for example, here, and I knew this question was going to come up. So if you want to make this here, right here, this garbage can, right, you still have to get the top. And then I still have to have like um, uh, a straw, a straw, a straw does the handles. And then you get, you still, I still have to make the top. But if you want to make this, so you can see this, you just cut it with an X-Acto knife. And I can do a tutorial too. And there's plenty of tutorials out there. Uh, X-Acto knife hot glue uh and paint and you got and you got yourself a dumpster so that's it you know you don't you don't need no power tools you don't you don't need a dremel nothing like that you need the big stuff yeah and what, what, stuff <laughs> what kind of paints do you guys um use um, that will adhere to the materials that you guys are using so is, is it acrylic paint or maybe it's there's, too technical there's a there's acrylic there's um you know Citadel is a lot of people use. It has a nice flat finish to it. Uh, there's also, uh, it depends on what you're doing. If you're doing like a barrel, you want to spray paint it. But it's, mm. it's, it all comes in technique, right? I can get really technical in technique. There's people that when you want to do the effects, like it's rusty, you can put like hairspray. So mm. it holds on to the paint and you can kind of, it, it, it's, I mean, I can go forever <laughs> on, on details and tips and stuff. But yeah, I mean, to make uh, something simple, it, it doesn't take that long, and it's it, you don't have to go out and buy like two hundred dollars worth of tools. You can actually spend probably about twenty dollars, and if you're really on the budget, you can go to a dollar store and find a lot of things like you know, popsicle sticks to do uh, pallets and things like that. So well, just people. Even, even eat popsicle sticks. <laughs> me and me and Dave go get to the store. We'll we'll yeah. eat the popsicles really fast and give you the. <laughs> <laughs> we can turn those out real fast. So, yeah, there's many there's many ways to be resourceful uh, resourceful with these things, you know. And um, just yeah, sometimes going to you'll find so much fun stuff at the dollar store that you can um, save a lot of money. Sure. Nice. Or when you're cleaning your house, you're like, find something under the couch. You're like, oh, I gotta I gotta repurpose this thing. <laughs> no <laughs> couch pizza, right? Nah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I know that for the um, for the. Uh, diorama that in your toy fair for the motaro one um i believe you used like pebbles or something and there was like a really clear glaze over it that was yeah cool. yeah um to get the glaze you use a lot of the hot glue mm. and what i learned is also a lot of people use hot glue like you'll get like a small you know it's so funny the things we use man uh those little twist ties that you find at the, the produce sections to twist mm -hmm. off your produce All right you just use that and you fill it up with hot glue and then that kind of because it's a twisty it could be like a web or effects or you know whatever you want it's just it's funny nice yeah i think i have some photos of that Keep well, while you're pulling it up jared um as you know prime manager for storm you know what is you know i'm assuming you, you see these photos with these great dioramas and it just makes the brand look so much better you know what do you what 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 excites you about you know dioramas and people you know taking these figures in like a totally different direction than Fact that you know most people i got my thing i got maybe a little bit of a background i take a picture you know to where you know we got a whole diorama set up here that's got to add you know significant value to, uh, to you as brand manager yeah um i think it really lends to the overall atmosphere of the ip that's at hand so if, for instance like we're looking at the mortal Kombat one right now you know you know you could just do you know acrylic risers you know in a display case and to show them off but by having a diorama i think it really um amps up the excitement for the figures um, it, it it really puts the figure in a light that people, you know, are fam familiar with, you know, nostalgia is a huge thing. So people will know these stages. So when they see these figures in these stages, like, well, wow, I remember when he did this move. Oh, does the figure have this accessory to replicate that move? Oh, it does. Oh, wow. Okay. I, I got to get it now. So, um, yeah, I, I really think that having the dioramas, um, coupled with the figures, it's just, you know, you can't be beat basically. Yeah, definitely. It brings a hype. And, and you know, I, I'm going to add on to you said, you're right. It just, it's that nostalgia when, when, for example, the Deadpool, right? When you hold the two buttons and you, and that's what you wanted to do. You wanted to hit that character inside the acid. So when you see that, you're just like, man, I need these figures. And then, and then it comes with demand, right? If uh, a lot of people like to display in glass cases and they're like, wow, I, I need a background like that. Yeah. How, how much do you pay for your acid? Do you have an acid guy to make the, <laughs> so the acid uh daniel made the acid on that but um it's, it's actually pretty cool i could do you have it or do you want me to bring it up i don't i don't have a, a, a copy of uh or a picture of it 
Okay, well, Jimmy Grant is just right behind me. I'll be right second. He's got the acid in his room. That's dangerous. You can't. I know, right? <laughs> and a uh, special shout out to um, to Toy Arc for um, these amazing. Photos. So the acid, the acid's really neat. It's um, let's see, it's kind of. It's, I don't know if you can you see that. Hold on. One yeah. Second. So Be careful, you don't want to spill. <laughs> it all over my my uh, computer there. So what you're seeing right there is paint, and there's a lot of hot glue. So the hot glue is what brings it up and makes it look like it's just splashing all over. Uh, the acid that's fizzing, it's um, it's uh, foam, not foam, but uh, a cotton, cotton, the cotton you. balls, yeah. Cotton balls. So the cotton balls are spread, so it gives it that little like fizz, right? And um, you know, when we get when we get to the next topic, I can uh, bring this back up. I, how uh, someone printed this whole stage, and it just looks so crazy. It's so awesome, almost like a replica of the actual stage on the on the game. Yeah, let's talk about that. Like, three D printing. Is that what you're talking about? Three D printing. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a three D printer? Is it going all night long? Does it sound like a dot matrix printer just going hang, <laughs> hang, hang, hang as you're trying to sleep? No, not yet, man. But uh, you know, I've seen. There's. Uh, I'm gonna do a shout out. There's an Adam Smith out there that's been very um, um, helpful in a group, and he and he managed to three D print a Mataro statue, which was like, you know, Daniel and I were going crazy. Like, where can we find it? Because we wanted to put it on the on a Mataro stage for Toy Fair. And Adam managed to print it, and it was it was just amazing because he did the exact same stage, right? And um, you see the Mataro statue, and it, it's just gonna look great when he actually gets the Mataro figure uh, on there. But it made me realize that three D printing is just a whole another level. Even with when you see uh, Darius's figure of his face, or you know, you, the figure you showed earlier, it's just that's that's the new thing, man. You could you could sit there. And just go to sleep, and you wake up. You have your little, you know, you have your piece ready. It's like the movie Weird Science, but with uh, a different kind of ending. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I mean, my thoughts of it. I, I, I'm a, I love it. I, I think it's great. I mean, I think you're still gonna have to do manual labor, um, and when it comes to those fine details, you know, to print out, like for example, when you can't find these at the dollar store no more. Now you can just print it out. Sure. I just picture like there being a slot on the side of the 3D printer and you insert an image and you say, here, make it. Like, that's, yeah. how, that's how I want it to be. I want it like a Star Trek computer where you just say, here, replicate. This uh, is the <laughs> and you probably you know, also they, want it instantly. I do. Yeah. I don't want to wait. I got stuff to do. <laughs> you know, they, they, they do have those ones. We actually had one of those. Uh, there's a, in Kirkland, there's this uh, shop that you walk in there and it's a, a 3D camera. 360 camera, excuse me, and you walk in these like big towers, and it scans your whole body, and it prints your whole body out. It's it's oh intense. Man. We can yep. use another Justin Cavender at Bluefin. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> I won an award once, you know, once. <laughs> Actually, you won two awards. Oh, there you go, two. That's two. two. Man, that, that's too much. I don't know if anybody can handle that. There were no, two. You great, four awards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, do we have any more questions in the chat? Uh, yeah, uh, there are quite a few actually. A lot of a lot of people are fascinated with this, and I think I think you've uh, I think you've gained some fans and some future competition. Uh, Chris Cooper wanted to know uh, if you could make a diorama from any movie, what would it be? Ooh, from any movie? Um, um, any movie? Uh, you know what? I really like. The show <laughs> Actually, you know what? They just uh, they, they just released a basic instinct. Uh, <laughs> um, ice pick yeah i think if uh i right now because Teen, teenage mutant ninja turtles is so high uh that's kind of the next thing i'm working on uh, after the sagat stage uh i want to do something fun um I'm, the turtle I'm, the turtle layer uh no the turtle layer would be uh too common i think maybe because i i hated the sewer level uh. where, where, where oh yeah, yeah. I'm um, thinking something like that, right? Because uh, we already have the water acid kind of unlocked, so maybe like a turtle surfing kind of layer. Uh, I saw the Rat King um, got announced, so yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe that's yesterday. Cool. Yesterday they showed that, yeah. Yeah, so maybe, maybe, maybe that's the next project is the a nice turtle uh, sewer stage. 
All right, so that'll uh, that'll wow um, Chris Cooper. He's a big Ninja Turtle guy. He's he's our he's our, our resident ninja man, and he does all he buys all of our May shows. He does awesome photography for like um, on May show figures, and uh, he's working to do dioramas just like you are. So uh, nice. he loves the turtles. So you are inspiring the man. Nice. I mean, who doesn't like? Turtles? I know. Right? Who doesn't like turtles? Jared doesn't. No, I don't. I don't happen to have anything over there at all. No. <laughs> there's no, there's no huge turtle there. Nothing. No, gotta no, come nothing. over and play uh, arcade. Go have fun. Yeah. I know. I, have re I recently saw those at Walmart too. The Ar turtles in time one. Yeah. I looked yeah. out. I had a birthday. I didn't have to buy. It. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so they also want to know. Uh, you know, we know your love for Storm. You know, that's 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 not in uh, any kind of question. Uh, what other lines or figure types do you do you like? Uh, so I, I like I like NECA. NECA's nice. Uh, Marvel Legends has been twisting my arm, but I got out of it, so I, there's no way I can go back. The, that Jim Lee setup calls my name every day, but, you know, it's funny because uh, my brother has a pretty massive collection, so I'm like, well, you have them, so if I ever need them, I'll just take them from you and he'll take them <laughs> and bring them right back. Uh, I do have the, the SH figure. I collect SH figure arts. I have the Naruto line. Um, I have the Street Fighter line too. Um, not this, you're gonna laugh. I'm not a Star Wars guy. I think I, a lot of people know that, that know me really well. I'm, I'm not a Star Wars guy. <laughs> but uh, I, I get so much slack for this, God. man. Because every time I'm like, oh man, those look really good. I'll tell my brother, hey, buy me one. He's like, you don't like Star Wars, so he doesn't <laughs> buy me one. And I'm like, well, I like the Mandalorian. So he's like, no, you're not getting. It. <laughs> and <I'm> like, oh. <laughs> I think he's just saving me, but uh, yeah, no, Black I, Black Series is nice. I, I, they're awesome figures, but I just I don't know, sure. never, I was never well, into Star Wars. You're not into you're not into the Marvel Legends anymore, but now they have that giant Sentinel from the I, I, Lab, and I they know. can make an incredible like city diorama with Sentinels capturing mutants and all kinds of crazy. Oh, you just ask me if I uh, <laughs> if I got it. Yes, I did. I, I couldn't say no to that thing. <laughs> I, I well, well, how many though? That's the question. Did you just get one, or did you get an army? Uh, well, between us, I think we got an army. Uh, <laughs> but see, this is coming from someone that used to have twenty builder figures. Sure. Uh, I was I was always a go big or go home, right? So I had twenty of those guys, and I ended up selling them. Uh, but I had them for my three and three quarters, so they were up to scale. Right. Um, but I ever since I sold those, I was like, I'll never go back because they're so expensive. But. Uh, yeah, that's the story. There's there's other lines. Um, um, what about any um, recommendations for light sources in sets? Do you ever use like LEDs or anything like that? Oh yeah, yeah. I use I have all sorts of lights. Um, uh, the one that uh, Darius mentioned, I actually have one of those um, for the sh for show, but I also use these too. Um, you can kind of see they change colors. Sure. And you you can get a six pack on Amazon. For uh, and it comes with a control, which is cool, for about thirty bucks, and I can show you the box because it's right here. And then also, just in a regular energy-saving light, um, uh, these right here, mm -hmm. and again, these are like thirty bucks on Amazon. They work great. You can um, put them anywhere, and you, you get two controllers, so you don't have to worry about touching the light and you know dropping a figure, moving something. Bam. Let me ask you this. Um, let's say you, you've completed your diorama, you think it looks great, and then you put some figures on it, you take a picture, and then when you look at the photo, do you ever see stuff that you want to change on your diorama? You're like, oh, it didn't turn out the way I wanted to, and I want to, I want to fix it. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of it was the lighting. Uh, you get the lighting perfect, you, uh, you feel a lot happier with your photo. Um, camera, too, has a lot to do with it, right? Sure. But it's all in the lighting. That's what I've learned. Is how you put it, how much lighting, uh, how you work with the lighting, where you position the lighting, and that really creates your, your image. Even when I do the natural lighting, like outside, uh, I notice a huge difference. So, yeah, it's that's yeah. I've, there's plenty of times. Like, I think the first one I sh uh, showed you was kind of like the first pictures I took, and now if you see my Instagram, you can see a huge like difference. Like, whoa, you learned how to use lighting. Sure. What's your um? I can pull it up. What is your uh, Instagram? Oh, it's I'm hip too. I'm hip too. With yeah. the number two. It's the opposite With the number of two. two. Yeah, I'm hip too. <laughs> oh, indeed. All right. 
So yeah, you can you can kind of see there um, the lighting has adjusted a lot better. Uh, I got better with my camera shots, and as you go lower, you'll you'll see what I'm talking about more blurry bits and some of it's personal with me goofing around. <laughs> yeah, who's that figure in the middle there? <laughs> oh man, isn't it crazy how large Goro and Bane are? Yeah, they're ginormous. Yeah, that's, 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 God, that Sub Zero. So I love that Sub Man. Right, no, he's great. So and he awesome. came with the head and spine too, which was yeah. Nice. That Bane is nice too. And then it, um, that's when you checking out the. I, I used some of the. It was extreme dials, extreme dials. Um, they're, they're, I like them. Uh, if, if you're really good with the camera, sometimes you could. You know, you can, a, lot, a lot of people blur out the things. And yeah, it's, so right under there, you can kind of see how the lighting. I'm starting to get used to it, and, and figure things out. You can see it's still kind of dark. Mm -hmm. And then on the one uh, on top uh, on the, on the bottom of this one, you right there. You'll definitely see it. I'm like learning. That's how it's mm -hmm. too dark. Um, I, you know, the newest ones I just started are all on the top. Right. We, we got a couple questions about scaling and like kind of cheating scale and force perspective. You know, uh, do you have any tips for that? You know, the the example in here was uh, you know making the Nika Godzilla or the Monster Arts Godzilla. It could be. Either. <laughs> um, you know, how, 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 how do you work for as far as scaling goes? Is, is, a, is it just an art form you kind of eyeball it, or do you, do you, do you go to the TV and you measure it? And... Oh, the scaling. So, uh, I, I, um, let's see. How, what is that? Uh, the question is, when I take a photo, how do I scale it? Or can you repeat the you question? Kind of the diorama. So, you know, a lot of the dioramas we saw were for like the six-inch figures, and so you know, those mm -hmm. are, you know, you kind of. Looks like you've mastered that scale. Have you done any kind of like scaling with like things like monster arts or you know any oh. larger scale figures? Uh, no, I haven't. You know, I don't. I haven't done anything like that. I've been wanting to, uh, you know, for Gundam and stuff like that. Uh, I think that's just a large. You have to go a, a larger size, and at that point, it's it's really room, right? It's how well, much. I mean, with, with Godzilla, you can have smaller dioramas because Godzilla is huge, so it's more like. He's stomping on the city versus. Oh, okay, 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 yeah, okay. I, I, I understand the question. Um, no, I haven't, but I, I imagine it'd be a little bit uh, difficult because you have to have. Uh, I actually have one. It's a magnifying glass. You just kind of clamp on, and I, I, I tend to use that a lot so I can get into the detail. Um, I haven't tried that. I don't have any of those figures, but I, it, it would be fun to do it. Um, you know, to try it. And see how it goes. I've seen it when, when you guys have it, or there's a guy in Chinatown that does a lot of those things. So, if, if you need or, me to replicate uh, my Godzilla stomping, I I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, when I used to no customize, when I used to customize the three and three quarters, um, uh, I would use the the magnifying glass, and it's just it's easier to get more uh, detail when you when you sure. can see. But I haven't, yeah, I haven't tried those yet. You need those jeweler goggles with like the 18 different lenses that get closer and closer and closer. Yeah. And again, <laughs> on those, if you know, to shop around because there's certain places that would have it for $80, the exact same thing. You go somewhere else, it's like 20 it's like, shh, shh, Yeah. You look like a scouter kind of, you know? Yeah, cool. totally. Oh, that's great. Well, cool, man. Um, is there anything that you want to... That you want to plug? Let's uh, mention your store again. Oh yeah, um, you know if you guys, if you guys are ever around Renton, come Rantan. come on by and uh, it's it. called D Pad Retro Gaming in uh, downtown Renton. And then also check out Legendary Dials um, with Daniel. Daniel, he's he's amazing, and uh, I've worked with Daniel for numerous years, and the, the guy's so talented. Right now he's uh, working on some Mad Max. Um, apocalyptic dials and it's, it's just some of his work is incredible he's getting really into like comic strip like uh acva style and you guys check it out legendary dials sure and this is your facebook page right yep cool dad you are a cool dad look at all those toys <laughs> and your youtube channel Oh, so it's the Ultimate Toy Collector with Cool Dads. Uh, Blake started it, and I just joined to help him out, moderated. It's getting big, and hey, I, I, we both travel all over the uh, convention, so 
he just we've been friends for a long time and he just added me and he's like hey man it's time for you to get out there and show your work and network with people and sure. so I, that's how, that was there for toy fair i did a lot of interviews for him and a lot of took a lot of pictures he was out there it was it was fun i definitely enjoy that side of the uh, business i think uh you know this this community sometimes can get a little down but when you start showing some love and bringing some life into the toys uh it, it gets really nice and you get to meet a lot of good people out there absolutely and then just a reminder that your insta is i'm hit too i'm hit too <laughs> all these fun photos this one with the, the light coming through how fun skeletons we need more skeletons gotta get you an army of skeletons i do right here <laughs> i love these guys these guys yep. are awesome i got six of them they're just luckily big. they come they come two in a pack so pretty easy to <laughs> army build with that yeah that was a smart idea for for, for storm man they, they just knew these were going to be a hit so like we're just going to give them two and then a bloody one with the tar yeah was it showing your insta when i had the screen share it was not Oh, why didn't you say we something? Did it with, we, we imagined it with our, with our minds. Oh. <laughs> you painted such an eloquent picture, it was easy to go there. Oh. Well, now I'm sad. Oh, that's Hold, okay. please. You kill him. To what? To your face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. Ultimate Toy Collector. So here's the YouTube. That's there, right? You see it? Yep. Yeah, see that's it. us. All right. Yep. Ultimate go ahead Toy Collector. Follow us, and we'll have coverage of all new figures and all sorts of fun. Cool. No, that's rad. And then we'll go back to your Insta here in a second. Uh, were there any more last-minute questions, by the way? Uh, no, just a, lot, just a ton of love. Everyone just saying incredible work. Thanks for doing everything. You know, talking about all the love in the community. You know, all of you are amazing. I'm assuming they mean except for Justin. Right. Uh, <laughs> <love>. <laughs> um, just, just people just in wow, just uh, just looking at these dioramas and being that you've inspired and given people a lot to think about. And like, oh, maybe I'll try that. But I think awesome. they're going to eat the popsicles to make the pallets because I mean that's just that's half that's the fun, right? Right. That's where it's yeah. at. Right on. No, oh, totally. And then again, your Insta. I'm hit two. Yeah. And here's the picture that I was painting, painting with the skeletons. <laughs> oh yeah, and again, you know, that's that's the the natural light that I'm talking about. Like when I I was looking at the lens and I saw the sun, I was like, and then I saw it hit the statue. I was like, whoa, this is great! I gotta take this. That looks yeah, yeah, it looks you only like have majestic. A few seconds. Yeah, yeah, and, and, yeah. and the sun's constantly moving, right? So it's yeah. gotta go fast. <laughs> yep, yep. So got a perfect shot there. And, Oh, get your great. JJ Abrams lens flare in. Yeah, that's where it's at. Some that's Ermac. Great. Oh man, yeah. he's missing his arms. Yeah, that's those are those um Figma Figma effects. Um I saw a guy post it on the group and I was like, yo, I gotta get some of those. These look perfect for him. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, again, you know, I'm going for the natural. Maybe later I'll I'll edit some of the stands out. Uh right now I'm just it's it's what I'm trying to prove is I'm just going out there having fun not caring just enjoying them you know right. that's that's my message to everybody just go out there and enjoy your figures absolutely that's what they're meant for yeah. You know? yeah people get too caught up in like the whole scalping you know investment part of it and um you know at the end of the day they're collectibles they should be enjoyed you know yeah. and um you know photography dioramas it all it all lends well to that yeah absolutely yeah exactly well, cool. Well, um, everyone, be sure to check out um, I'm Hip 2 on Instagram. And if you're ever in Renton, go to his store, uh, D Pad Retro Gaming. Renton is an amazing city. Uh, hopefully, during, uh, if we get lucky and we have an Emerald City Comic Con next year, uh, you'll definitely have a presence. It'll be a lot of fun. In the meantime, we're celebrating Comic Con at home right now. Uh, please visit bluefinbrands.com slash SDCC for all of our amazing deals that we have going there. You got some bundles, some exclusives, and more. All right. Thank you very much, Emilio, and everyone else. You have a wonderful day. We have more streams coming at you tomorrow. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, we can't wait to talk to you all again. Have a good one, guys. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Emilio! Uh, <laughs> Emilio! <laughs>